Do you um, want to send him out? I mean, you don't send him yeah, out of this yeah, sport. Yeah, if, right? if, if I hurt him, I'm going to try to clean him up. But I mean, just beyond that fight, just, you know, maybe just keep yeah. Bernard from ever, ever, you know. Yeah, I'm going to try to hurt him. That's, when I say clean him up, I mean like, you know, when you, when you clean a baby. Nice, nice well, shave. You, nice. Get, you get shaved up, you get all this done. Right. I'm going to clean him up. <laughs> you uh, switched to Abel Sanchez. Um, yeah. Can you talk about A, why the switch, and B, how do you feel like that is paying off in the training and, and you know, some of the tactics that you're going to be doing? Um, I, I switched to Abel Sanchez uh, to diversify my, my fight style instead of, you know, being so, so one-dimensional, you know. It, it was always another dimension of Tavares Cloud trying to get out, and uh, I just need to be with somebody that would help me bring it on out. Uh, as far as training with him, the advantages of training with him, you know, number one, I trained for eight weeks up in Big Bear, 7,000 feet altitude up in the mountains. I mean, you you got to be a man to do road work up there. So, I mean, I'm feeling real good. I'm in great shape. You know, had great spawn, uh, and I'm, I'm just ready to go. I'm just ready to go. I think that the, the switch paid off a lot. Is it fair to say, and correct me if you think I'm wrong, that um, you could have gone to the body a little bit more in the Campillo fight, and even possibly the Yusef Mack fight, because um, when you when you got them, when you got to them, they went down. They gave, but you didn't get to them either early against uh, Yusef, late against Campillo, and has that been a part of your strategy with, with Abel? Uh, yeah, yeah, going to the body. Uh, Abel is an old school trainer, going to the body and hitting fighters in the body, anywhere in the body is definitely part of our game plan. And anytime, you know, young fighters fight, we can always go to the body a little bit more, you know, and I, I, I think going to the bottom make a hell of a lot of sense right now. In your assessment, why were you, in your own words, you said you're one-dimensional. What things weren't you doing and what things can we expect to see more of? Well, not, not that I, I'm one-dimensional, but but I was, I was fighting just with the power game. With the power game and uh, the power game is glorified by a lot of trainers because of course, if you train a fighter that knock everybody out that he fights, you're gonna say, "Oh, he got a great trainer," you know. So, with, with the, you know the power game, a lot of times it'll get me in trouble too, mm -hmm. you know. So I I, I, uh, I started switching it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Hopkins, yeah. Hopkins is one of the things he he, he prides himself on is so-called areas, so-called yeah. taking away the jab. Um, but obviously, if, to get to the body, to get to the guy, I would think a jab has to be a part of your game. Can you talk about your jab and just that notion that that he likes to do that, take away the jab deceptively? Yeah, if, 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 he, if he, I don't think he can take away the jab, but hey, he, he got two hands to worry about, not just the jab, you know. I, I more than likely take away his jab. What about stuff um, Hopkins is saying about trying to put Don out of business and saying that if you lose, you might have to close up shop. Does that does that bother you at all, or is that kind of a weird thing to say, kind uh, of a mean thing to say in in the run up to this fight? No, Hopkins is a talker. I don't I don't care what he's saying. You know, it's, it's not bothering me. You know, whether he gonna put Don King out of business, all this stuff, and he gonna open up. Uh, uh, fried chicken restaurants and all that. I don't, I don't, you know, when all happens ain't bothering me. It seems like a, like a kind of a mean, like, like a beyond just trash talk, yeah. kind of a mean thing to say yeah, he, to anybody. He, he, he talking trash to Don King. He, right. He, he talking trash to Don King. He ain't thinking about, uh, the, the task at hand. You know, Don King, uh, got inside his head doing his first press conference in here. You you think know, he, maybe was, he's more worried about Don King than he is maybe you? Yeah, he, he needs to get his priorities in order. Mm -hmm.
Tell me about, about um, you know, obviously Hopkins is 46 years old, um, but... He's forty, he, he 49, ain't he? Yeah, 49. So he's, well, who knows? Uh, uh, Archie Moore was lying about his age, I think he's 51. Too. Yeah, he could be 51. Um, do you think that people maybe underestimate him a bit because of, the, of his age a little bit? I don't underestimate him. I just don't believe he can beat him. You know, I don't, I don't really care how old he is, but I don't believe he can beat him. We saw Chad Dawson um, be the first guy to really beat him cleanly and without you know any dispute in his last fight. Um, do you think there are more than one way? Do you think there's more than one way to beat Hopkins? Like uh, I, you're a little bit different fighter than Dawson. Do you think yeah. there's, there's a different way that you can beat him than Dawson did? Like, yeah, I mean, I'm the way I plan to do it. I'm going straight to his ass. I'm going straight to his ass, old-fashioned ass whooping.